I knew, Brian, we were going to talk about a show on CNN last night. I tuned and watched Grumpy Old Man 3. I would say the 90-plus-year-old Burgess <laughs> Meredith handled himself much, much better than Joseph R. Biden. Welcome to the Natural Order Podcast with your hosts, Brian O'Leary and Adam Heyman. Natural Order Podcast back with you, Adam Heyman and myself, Brian O'Leary here back with you. We decided we need to get back on the saddle. Me in particular, Adam is too busy uh, with the cigarette boat known as Heyman Nature to... uh, (laughs) Stop, but uh, <laughs> figure we get back in this thing and talk about the debate with Trump and Biden that took place, what, on Thursday night? We're recording this Friday. That's I what we're doing what, here today, guys. I knew, Brian, we were going to talk about a show on CNN last night, but I tuned and watched and watched Grumpy Old Man 3. Um. You saying that was a presidential debate? I yeah, I, I would say the ninety plus year old, probably at the time, Burgess <laughs> Meredith handled himself much, much better than Joseph R. Biden. Holy moly! So that was my initial thing. We talked last night, Adam, and so just to for the folks out there, it's not that Adam and I don't talk. We talk a lot, actually. Still, we just don't do these for public consumption as much. But um, we we decided that uh, yeah. Maybe we need to, or maybe we want to, so we will. Uh, but we were talking last night. I said, I don't want any reaction. And I want to see this see this thing for myself. And I had turned it on uh, for, honestly, a couple minutes. And I'm like, wow, holy cow. But to your point, Adam, when we were, you said, I don't really want to see the the reaction ahead of time or anybody talk about it. I started taking notes when I rewatched, rewatched this thing. And if I, it was like the whole Nixon Kennedy thing. (laughs) If I just listened to Biden, it wouldn't been as bad, but this was bad. If you saw the guy, it was bad. And everybody probably figured that out. But anyway, go ahead. Well, yeah, it took about half a second. I mean, he dodderingly shuffled to the podium, (laughs) mumbling. You know, I mean, he had a lapel mic on. He was just sort of mumbling yeah. incoherently. And that's how the thing started. <laughs> it didn't get any better. And we'll get into the details. But I'll give Biden, I think, an F. I think that's clearly a failing grade. I think Trump won the debate easily. And that's with about a D plus as a performance. I, I would agree. I thought he, I, was, he was horrible. He barely beat this this walking cadaver. Oh, yeah, and he had everything. Speaking of the, the golf analogies that may come up later, but he, he had everything teed up right for him just to smack it right down the fairway. Yeah, and he, he was missed. Chunking it off, he was chucking it off the tee. As I was, yeah, I was using basketball analogies, you know, <laughs> with Jennifer last night, but it's like he just keeps missing these layups. You know, yeah. Biden will just outright tell some huge lie or offer some huge layup about how bad, Biden is and how great Trump is. And Trump just couldn't articulate any of it. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was weak, weak, weak sauce. To your point, the first reaction I wrote down, Biden can't walk and he can't speak. <laughs> but other than that. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes in and says he, the pandemic was not handled well by Donald Trump. That was his in, uh, opening, sal- one of the opening salvos. It's like, yeah, granted, we all know this. We all know that Trump failed with the whole COVID response. But guess what? He made it umpteen times worse with his policies and whatever. Of course, he goes in and mentions Scranton, you know, growing up in Scranton. That was the old the old Scranton line that he brought. And then the corporate greed, you know, talking about that. And I'm just like, man, Biden is a liar. He oh, yeah. just lies about stuff. And it's like, that's nothing new. But then I'm like, oh, well, Trump, you know, whether, you know, you can call him a liar or not, he's super, super boastful. 
and exaggerating, but Biden actually just doesn't tell the truth whatsoever in many cases. Yeah, so. I would say Trump obviously is hyperbolic. You know, he tells sure. whoppers of lies, but I would <laughs> yeah. say they're directionally true. If you listen to what he says, you sort of get an idea of what he's about and what he intends to do. Biden, on the other hand, is just a criminal who, who, <laughs> who, yeah, just lies, lies about everything. But one of the most interesting, fascinating, and childish parts of this debate was the one you just mentioned, where they're both acting like two-year-old or four-year-olds who broke the vase and mommy's mad and they're pointing at each other. They're both yeah. trying to hang the COVID nightmare and inflation on each other, just going, he did it. No, no, he did it. No, he did it. No, no, he did it. It was, it was pathetic. You both did it, gentlemen. You're both terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, the, one of the things that came up a lot is that the gaslighting, Joe Biden constantly called Trump a liar or he lies or liar realizing or not realizing maybe gaslighting us all that he is just an extraordinary liar. He's been in his entire political career is he's been a liar and he got knocked out of the democratic primary back in what was that 1988 or 84, maybe even I think 88 because he fabricated a resume or his educational background, just fabricated entirely. He can and also he, walk on to any, uh, any major player. golf course in the country and shoot a 78 at any time. Right. Were you, yes. were you it's aware of that? Cap and then he backtracked to know <laughs> I might be an eight or I was an eight. And like, and he's almost what he's 78. He could shoot his age. There's no chance. I would pay a significant amount of money to watch him try to hit 10 golf balls. Yeah. And the, the flubbing and stuff. I, I don't know if we have, we don't really have a particular direction, but geez, not, not lying, but just the mental, in, the ineptitude he had, he was talking about, you know, boasting by talking about once again, he's boasting about going to France for the D day stuff or, you know, Trump didn't do that. I did. I went to the World War II or World War One cemeteries, and I and I spoke to the soldiers who died. <laughs> if it's true, I mean, yeah, he should be president, or at least a strong <laughs> advisor. Or yeah, uh, yeah. On the and, on a positive note for Biden, and I can only see one. He did promise to beat Medicare which I've been waiting for for a long, long time. I I thought he said we already beat it. Maybe we already beat it. Okay, even better. Does, doesn't look defeated, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we beat Medicare. Okay. Well, uh, All right. if you'll indulge me... Um, I shall. I, I just don't to... think there's that much to talk about with Biden, mm -hmm. except for a couple of hoaxes that he trotted out on stage. So I'd rather focus a little bit more on Trump because I do think he won... <laughs> His strongest tactic was hammering on the immigration problem, which is obviously a concern for a lot of people, Democrats included, and the fact that the economy is a nightmare. And although Trump spent a whole lot of money, you know, he's not good on the economy, except maybe in the regulating cutting department a little bit. It is obviously a good idea to hang the current wretched economy around the neck of the incumbent, and he did that. Mm -hmm. But he just was so verbally inarticulate. And again, that's compared to a, a cadaver. But Trump just could not make his points very well at all. I was really surprised. Do you think some of it had to do with the format where Trump couldn't get in his, his zingers? You know, he's not really well known for like this you know, stand up speech and other than being on a teleprompter, but he's good off the cuff with the zinger and they cut the mics. So yeah, he couldn't actually he no. couldn't with, I think the format okay. helped him because the okay. only thing that could have propped up Biden is if he could have said, yeah, but this guy was just interrupting me all the time. And, you know, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I think the back and forth was plenty of enough time to allow Trump to make the I mean, you could say that some of the questions, you know, were a little more anti-Trump than anti-Biden. You know, you could make that argument. I'm, I'm not even sure I would, but you could. 
but no, I just think Trump fumbled the ball. He, he missed easy layups. Particularly like when Joe would, I thought, I didn't think, I did not think he would bring up that fine people hoax again. You know, it was recently Amazing. debunked by even left-leaning Snopes. Everybody and knows he, that's not true. And he tried that, that out two again. Or time. Yep. Two or three times and back to it too. And he said, oh, something about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. He talked about uh, yeah, the people coming out of that forest carrying those torches. <laughs> I'm like, and then the whole January 6th thing, which I think we probably talked about on this show before, but just how he's trying to hang him with that whole Jan 6 narrative. And it's like, it's the same thing as the Charlottesville stuff. Or it's like, it, it's not really true what the media portrayed the problem and or even the actual thing to be. And and certainly Trump's role in any of it was not. Yeah, it, it was totally. But blown again, up. he had Trump had such obvious responses and he just blathered a little oh, yeah. bit. I mean, how hard would it have been to say, yeah, it sounds like a right wing insurrection when a bunch of. Uh, bunch of angry people stormed a place and didn't bring any guns. They thought they could take over the government. That, that sounds mm-hmm. like Republicans, right? Didn't even yeah. bring, don't, don't bring any firearms to a, to a revolutionary revolt. Right. Yeah. And I think I saw somebody online say, well, they, he could have said, well, 1776 was an actual insurrection. Sure. And that, that actually happened. But more to your point or earlier that this debate while somewhat entertaining and it got us talking, it doesn't change anything. Like, if you were going to vote for Trump or not vote for Trump or vote for Biden or not vote for Biden, I can't imagine any person changing their mind after last night. Oh, I can. Oh yeah. Sure. There's a, I think there's a fairly substantial percentage of the public that's either independent or slightly left leaning who was just sort of reflexively going to vote for Biden because Trump is wild and unhinged and insane. And Biden is, you know, basically just a responsible adult left leaning Democrat. And they've been told by the corporate press that, you know, maybe he fumbles on the stairs or turns the wrong way on a podium, tries to shake invisible people's hands. But behind closed doors, this guy's juggling flaming swords and reciting poetry (laughs) and doing, you know, calculus in his head. So I think most people who aren't just obsessed with politics and haven't been paying attention might have tuned in and gone, oh, my God, what in the world is happening? (laughs) <laughs> Interesting point. Yeah, it's a decent. That's a decent analysis. Do you think it's enough to move the needle either way? I don't know what where the needle is pointing right now. I forget who it was. We haven't gotten to the reaction part yet, but somebody smart, maybe Naval Ravikant. Uh, his tweet was just after the debate. His tweet was just, "Who's running the country?" Yeah, no kidding. Like, like who's. <laughs> So for the average person who hasn't been following things and just tuned in, they might be thinking, this sh- this ship is rudderless. We don't have a captain. What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, getting to, to that point, if Biden is any in any way acts the same as he did on stage as he did last night, he evoked just shock and confusion the entire time. And some of it was legit outrage, but it was anything Trump said. He was like shocked to hear it, confused if it was real. And then he he had a comeback to a lot of the stuff, but he was fumbling. It was worse than I fumble along with my speech. But hey, <laughs> you know, he, he fumbled. He was not able to beating medicare i'm okay all right we beat Medicare. like i don't even know what that means and, the, and then the one thing i saw last night before i rewatched it and i tweeted something to the effect uh early on and he he said i don't understand uh the last sentence you said and i don't believe you <laughs> yes that was <laughs> like, he could have said a, that a lot he could have said that a lot oh, he could have said it every time and i'm i yeah, got myself I'm really bummed out he didn't because it was just a perfect opportunity to to just lay into the guy and 
So when Biden did that and said, oh, you have the morals of an alley cat or that's just outrageous. It doesn't sound sincere or real. But when Trump can do that to Biden, he just dismisses the guy altogether because that's those are the position. Yeah. yeah, it's appropriate. Yeah. No, you're right. The only thing Joe Biden had, you know, the tennis analogy, you know, his, his strong forehand or whatever. The only thing he kept going back to was just this sort of doddering moral outrage. And he kept trotting it out over and over and over. In fact, I got myself a, into a little trouble. You know, we were playing a little drinking game here and oh boy. I didn't go with uh, come on, man, or you know, Monlarkey or any of that stuff. I went with Nip something fairly at least once. Right. But I went with something I thought was safe, which was uh, the very idea that Yes, I did. Well, I believe Joe said that 50 times. uh, I went to the hospital last night. (laughs) (laughs) The very idea of this man thinking blah, blah, blah. And that's all he had. That was his only gear, this moral outrage at at Trump. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, that's sort of been the left-wing position since he came down. The golden escalator was just a visceral disgust at this person. And then the rest will just fill in the blanks afterwards. And uh, yeah, and maybe that works you may- when you can string two sentences together, but it sure doesn't work when you can't. You mentioned the back and forth with the two, and it's like, gosh, uh, not real, real great either. But there was one exchange where the moderators wanted them to talk about overdoses mm-hmm. in people in particular. And so ostensibly had some, I think it came off the heels of the border situation, perhaps. I can't remember exactly, but Trump said, oh, we're doing very well in addiction. I'm like, you know, it's just another one of these Trump things is like, the is best. that a good thing or a bad thing? All right. And then he says, then he says, oh, we bought the certain kind of dog. Oh. <laughs> sniffs, sniffs out addiction or drugs or whatever it's unclear but it's like he leaves things so vague and it's such a weird brag that he has for all these different things oh we're doing so well in a, a, a addiction and we we bought this certain kind of dog so he gets cut off right and then it goes to biden and biden starts talking about fentanyl machines like what the what are you talking about like, oh, we got these machines and we we need those machines. What was he talking about? So it's fentanyl. Like, not that, you know, the pronunciation is great, but it, it he called it fentanyl, fentanyl. I kept hitting fentanyl. <laughs> and he talked about these machines. Like, first I've heard of the fentanyl machines. I don't even know if there's their thing, but we need those machines. And he said it in a way that, say, he was... 30 years younger, uh, somewhere in our age bracket, he might've had some, he might've had some, you know, authority with that nonsense, but he doesn't, he's so like you say, doddering or whatever. And he does not, he does Hello. not have that authority. Even, even eight years ago, he had, would have had some authority, even though it's nonsense. I'm not worried. And we've, we've got a big addiction, opioid, opioid overdose crisis. And, we have two leaders to choose from, apparently. Our adults overlord told us that, and one of them is going to solve this problem with imaginary machines and the other one with an imaginary dog. I'm not worried yeah. at all. I mean, really, this debate was a clash of the titans. I mean, honestly, uh-huh. it was a debate for the ages. These are our, we don't just, you think we're not going to send our best and brightest and elevate them to the highest office in the land? These are the best we got. We're in great shape. See, yeah, the, they t- started talking about age it was a little later. I said, Mr. Biden, you're, you'll be 86 at the end of the second term. He looks way older than that right now. I mean, I know some 86 year olds that look yeah, fine. It's and not all the same. <laughs> way younger that look way older, but he, he, he doesn't look good. And Trump is three or four years younger than Biden. And, uh, you know, he'd be 82 at the end of the team. Then Biden start. He talked about like some other thing, like Middle East chips when he was talking about computer chips from China. And he talked about Middle East chips. And it's like, no, you're already there. You're already cognitively well into the past the century mark. So let's just stop there. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter who's in charge or who's ostensibly in charge. They're all Zephod Beeblebrox from 
Douglas Adams is the Hitchhiker's Guide. It's just a distraction. The guy in the suit at the podium, he's not running the show. Come on. The Civil Service laughs at the presidency. The answer is 42. The answer is always 42. Um, Are you ready to pivot toward the hilarious reaction to the uh, to the debate? A little bit. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't actually go down that road too much. I saw a little bit of it, but I'm willing to dive in because I'm interested in. Well, some let's, uh, I was aghast because what I expected was that, I mean, I just left it on CNN, you know, to see how they okay. spun the thing because I'm lazy and the remote control was out of reach. He was popcorn. on all the other channels. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Well, I just watched it on CNN. So I expected that with as wretched a performance as it was, most of the pundits would have said, yeah, it was about a tie. You know, maybe, okay. maybe Biden didn't advance to the net and jump up and spike up every, you know, volleyball pass that was dished up, but it was about a time. No, immediately it was full on panic mode from all. It looked like 20 people oh, really? on the stage saying we meet, we need to pick someone. We need to take Joe Biden out and put someone else in. This is a catastrophe. Oh, wow. I mean, full on panic. And I was shocked. I did yeah, not expect that. I heard a little of that uh, through the Twitter sphere, I guess you'd call it, but I, I didn't, I didn't realize that came actually on CNN immediately. Itself. I mean, wow, it, it was it was amazing, and it reminded me. You remember back, uh, folks who've uh, been listening to our show for a while, back on episode nine, I talked about how our beliefs literally affect our perceptions. Mm-hmm. At least on the margins, you know, with little things, those auditory tricks, those those visual tricks. Right. And I think one of the biggest belief systems that influences how we perceive things is our ideological, you know, sense of self or whatever. And I think these people have been lying to themselves about Joe Biden's ability, you know, since before he was elected, because it was an issue then, right? And if he's your guy, you're just going to say, that's ridiculous. He's fine. Nothing's wrong. You guys are yeah. distorting the videos. You're making your little jokes, but he's fine. I think what happened here, you, you remember that analogy I made or that experiment I talked about where the mm-hmm. scientists would show people in just flashes of a second an image of a, a, a card the from card. a deck of cards. cards. And some of them yeah. were non-standard. You'd get the sure. red deuce of clubs, that sort of thing. And if you slow down the the amount of time that you show the thing or you speed it up. So you see it for a longer period of time. Eventually your brain will get yourself out of that framework and go, Oh, I'm not looking at a standard deck. I'm seeing something different. And I think that's what this debate was for that panel of 20, some shocked left-leaning talking heads. I think this was them finally seeing past their own cognitive dissonance on the fact that Joe Biden is a walking corpse who, and he probably has been for a long time. Yeah, and I don't quite get what they weren't what they weren't seeing I, in the me last two, but it just goes least, to show maybe not four four years, but certainly the last two. You can uh, talk yourself into anything, man. I if you're so. on record, if you've got your ego tied into a thing that you said that he's just fine, well then you're not gonna see everybody falls a little bit when they try to go up the stairs. And you know, he confused his sister and his wife, but you know, it could have been anything. You just talk yourself into it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, he can't walk and he can't speak. And they said, uh, I was, I had it recorded on Fox news or that was one of the things that got recorded. Cause I said, record debate. And so Fox news had it and it goes immediately. I thought the whole thing was going to last two hours. It lasted way shorter than that. So yeah they went right into the coverage and then whatever their show after that. So I didn't see after that, but, uh, immediately Brett bear says, Oh, we just got word that Biden's camp said Biden has a cold. We didn't know that going into the head of time. And it's like, I guess I could see. Yeah. I mean, cold. I mean, three years ago, they would have called it COVID and called off the entire debate at all. So yeah, maybe he has a cold or COVID or whatever, and he's not feeling too good. But does uh, okay. okay does a cold give you a concussion such that you can't speak or talk or think? Right. Yeah, and he didn't see you know he didn't seem any more nasally or anything. It was just like, all right, well, 
Did he not have rest? He should have. He could have canceled. I mean, done it before. Trump did it before. Hasn't he been prepping for this debate for a week? Like I think doing said nothing 10, 10 else. Days. Eight or ten days he was at Camp David. Up at Camp just, David. Yeah. He's been prepping for this. And I assume adjusting his sleep schedule and adjusting his medication schedule. I think there I, was a drug test that they agreed to. I'm not entirely sure if that was real, but Trump said that he wanted a drug test. I know he demanded it, but I don't think it was agreed upon. Or I okay. would have heard I think I would we would have heard more about that. I think so too. But uh yeah, what was oh state of compared to the state of the union, which I didn't watch the whole thing, but Biden was on top of it for that compared to last night. And you would have thought that it would have been more important for him to be if they were to choose one way or another, it'd, it'd be more important for him to be on top of it mano a mano. Well, there's but two things that could be going on there. Okay. One could just be that it's hard to finesse these things. You know, yeah, you get what you get. And another could be a fact that we all sort of know if we know anybody who's gotten old and, you know, started to deteriorate when these things happen, it, it goes pretty quick. Maybe he's just mm-hmm. that much worse since the state of the union. That's possible. But he wasn't in real good shape before that. No, so. no, he wasn't. But yeah, yeah I don't One think step it's linear. Up, two step back, as they say. Yeah, perhaps. It's not geometric yeah, exactly, yeah. but I don't think right. it's linear. And, uh, so do you think, I mean, it's fun <laughs> on an episode of Human Nature that I've recorded, but hasn't come out yet. One of my outlandish predictions for the rest of the year was that either Trump or Biden or maybe both wouldn't show up on your ballot in November. Well, it looks like it's not going to be Biden. I mean, the DNC is panicked. Do you, So what do you think they're going to do? Do you have a... Uh, I, I was trying to watch a little bit of the stuff when they were talking about the mechanics of how how well that worked. The Democratic Party screwed if they don't put Biden there. There's no way that anybody... uh, How are they they not screwed no matter what they do? (laughs) Well, I think there's enough people like around the 50-50 part that Biden still stands a chance. Uh, Some of these states, you know, I don't know what the polling after last night, but some of these states, the polling... a lot of the polling suggests that Biden's going to win the election anyway before last night. Now, if they take Biden off and put Kamala Harris in, they because that's pretty much what they have to do to save face and save reputation because she's next in line. People actually hate her. People don't care for Biden. But People that's actually the thing. hate her. It's what, June? Trump has until November. Assuming they keep Biden in, Trump has until November to say the person you're really voting for for the next four years is obviously Kamala Harris. It so is. the fact that she's the most universally hated woman on the planet is not named Hillary Clinton. It, it doesn't yeah. matter whether they pull him or not. If she's still there, everyone is going to think there's going to be yelled at. <laughs> this person un- universally hated other than Hillary Clinton? <laughs> yes, that's my claim. And uh, so I think Pretty whether high. they... Uh, I think leaving Biden in is the exact same thing as pulling her for Kamala. Everybody knows they're going to be voting for Kamala Harris, not Biden, for the next four years. You think think, so? You think it's a conscious, known thing that that the average Democrat knows they're voting for Kamala Harris? If they ever hear a single Trump ad, they'll know it. I mean, what else would you say if you were Trump? Obviously, this man can't serve a month, let alone a a term. So you're voting for the VP to to be president. Yeah, well, I think the DNC knows that, and I think they're going to take a Hail Mary with either your wretched governor there in California or somebody who I'm not thinking of yet. Maybe Hillary Clinton herself. I don't know. She is a demon. Yeah. Demons don't like to go away. I mean, as a, like the 11th hour replacement for Biden or Harris or both new ticket all together? Brand, brand new ticket. I mean, they can do it. Yeah. It's it's their own little private club, the DNC. They can do anything they want. They, they don't have that convention for another month or two, right? Uh, August, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, you guys jumped the gun a bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess they had a problem. I mean, the interests involved, you know, the military-industrial complex and all the people who have attached themselves onto it, you know, the pharmaceutical company, all the unions, just all these corrupt entities, oil and gas... Uh, whatever Halliburton does, you know, the the whole corrupt mess, they have attached themselves to this Biden thing. And it just, 
it, it boggles my brain to think they don't have a plan B already thought out. You know, I, I can't believe they're actually scrambling. I've been saying for a long time that, you know, Nikki Haley, who looks like the mouthpiece for the regime as I've ever seen, I think that was their pick on the Republican side. And she's only suspended her campaign. She hasn't canceled it. I thought they were going to try and off Trump and shove her in there. So maybe they have that as a as their back pocket plan if they can't figure out the you know the Biden ticket. Yeah, but it looks bad. Yeah, it's bad. And then we have, I mean, let's not completely dismiss the rest of the candidates, but you have Robert Kennedy Jr., who's still hanging around, and at least in some states or a lot of states. And then you have, you know, he. uh, he recorded himself answering the debate questions. I think he live streamed yeah, right. it. So I'll, I'll have yeah. to go back and check that out. But boy, can you imagine him being on the stage with those two idiots? No. Even with his gravelly voice. And uh, I mean, he would have just beat the hell out of those two. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. I think. It, or maybe Trump voice, would have come alive and fought yeah, back or something. I don't the know. Voice, the voice alone, although it has improved in recent years, the voice alone is more than a bit off putting for. Yeah, but if you don't have to talk over anybody, you know, if, if interjections aren't allowed, he True. comes through loud and clear, you know, when he comes across as presidential. He, uh, yeah. yeah. He's not my Chase, cup of tea. The Chase Oliver fellow who I know you've uh, mentioned <laughs> a little bit in your writings and podcasts and stuff, and I know you were there for his coronation. <laughs> uh, he doesn't, I think he's going to probably do the worst that any libertarian candidate has done in because of my, my time. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Bobby jr. Specifically it's, it's the Ross pro effect, but I did mm-hmm. find it some somewhat interesting in a disturbing way that the, when the talking heads again, in that after show for on CNN, when they're uh-huh. talking about third party people, they mentioned Robert F Kennedy jr. And Jill Stein and Cornell West. Didn't even mention the libertarian candidate. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, I'd be interested to see if he pulls uh, better than, you know, there's there's some hardcore, not they're more than libertarian, but there's hardcore Green Party people, but they'll only vote Green Party ticket. Libertarian Party people will often not vote for a guy like Chase Oliver, say, (laughs) if he's just a total clown show. I mean, the, what, the Bill Weld, that whole well we are making the argument that if you're a left-leaning person chase oliver is a much better candidate than joe biden which is true that's a good point which is true so if you want to vote something like your principles you know chase oliver's is a good vote yeah better than jill stein i would argue and i'm not she seems to yeah she comes around every four years or has been for the last... It has been, yeah. I don't know much about her. Um, <laughs> I, I know Cornell West is hilarious. He showed up at the California uh, Libertarian Party convention and got on a panel with Jacob Hornberger. And who was the other Libertarian candidate? I can't remember. And uh, he's hilarious. Pure socialist. I would, don't want him anywhere near control of the levers of power, but mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a strongly anti-war. Yay, Cornell. Uh, socialist. Boo, Cornell. So, mm. yeah, other than, other than all, all this reaction and where like, we're going, I mean, is there going to be another debate? I don't, I haven't heard. I, I would kind of doubt it. I can't imagine. Not with, not with Biden. Even though I wor- hate the word kind of. Yes, you do. Right. I'll forgive you. Yeah. Um, I don't think Biden's team will allow it. I don't think Trump needs it. I think if we see another debate, it will be a different pairing. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with uh, what was not addressed at all in this conversation or any of the coverage I saw, other than what one thing Joe Biden said was Trump's illegal situation. I mean, they're going to they're going to hammer that over and over the you know convicted felon, convicted felon, convicted felon, but it like didn't look to bother Trump all that much because he knows it was a largely it's, just got railroaded. It's a sham. Yeah. It's political, uh, political activism via the department of justice or these state DAs. I got to assume the most of the country sees that 
even if you hate Trump, can't you I'd, see how I'd much agree. of a joke this is? No, yeah, and I think that's what's come out in the last several weeks anyway, that exact sentiment. But the other hand, the other part of it is that we don't know if tr- Trump's going to be in the slammer literally or not by the time November comes around. So if he is physically incarcerated, then what happens? Can they pick another candidate or even like say in the sometime in the fall, the October no, surprise? No, no, maybe, no, no, no. Eugene V. Debs got yeah, legitimate right. votes from prison. Yeah. You just move Lincoln's desk right into whatever cell he's in. And that's the new Oval Office. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a lot of ins, a lot of outs in the old, uh, the old duder's head there. <laughs> a lot of strands. What a crazy situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. And Just the goofy. fact is that is what are we, gosh, 250 years into the, this supposed nation's history that here we are the, the pinnacle of a Republic pinnacle of a democracy. And we end up with a guy who might go to jail. Who knows? <laughs> He's 34 times convicted in an election year. And Joe Biden, you need not say any more, just a to, totally pathetic candidate, pathetic man, pathetic politician, all of the above. And it's like, well, where are all the people? Where are all the leaders in this country that they're, they're, that could rise and get sl- knocked down, feet cut out from under them? And there might not be that many of them to begin with, but well, if the system is as corrupt as I and you, I think, feel that it is, then those people should never go far, in, you know, even if they were, uh, first of all, I think you have to be a little bit sick and corrupt in your soul to want to be wielding well, power over your fellow man. Problem. But let's say, you know, Ron Paul style, someone who actually was good, tried to advance. I think it was a miracle that Ron Paul got as high as he did because the the machine, the regime, the corrupt alignment of interests that don't want to see any honesty in Washington, well, they'll just push you down. They'll do everything they can. Look at the dirty tricks the DNC did to Bernie Sanders, and all he was was a populist yeah. socialist. <laughs> but they had to cheat and scheme to because to, to, he was too popular. They, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, let him have the primary. So I think the this is a corrupt thing ruled by corrupt people, and so of course we should see corrupt people at the top. Famous inventor, American inventor, and many other things. Buckminster Fuller says, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And there's a lot of wisdom there. And he's talking, I mean, who knows? I don't know exactly what he was talking about. There could be talking about anything. So it always, it comes up. It's, it's specific enough and vague enough that could come up. But in our case, in our specific case, and what we're uh, talking about here, I think that this, you're fighting the existing model, Uh, this two party head of some oppressive government it, you, you don't fight that head on. You're no, never going to win. Uh, I think you're but exactly you, right. You, what you, we need to do. Systems yeah. That not only they don't challenge that, that can stay in place. See, I think this is the problem that most people who want to fight the government, myself included for many years, we're just like, but we're trying to go head to head with these guys and you can't no, no, do no. it. It's a two part pronged structure. The first one you alluded to, we need to, nurture and grow the private institutions that yeah, we, we talk about that, that, that a lot on this. We show. talk about it a lot to do the things that we are trained to rely on government for. And then you don't, you don't go heads up against the regime. That is not appropriate or practical. You can't win. What we should do is what we've just spent 40 minutes doing, which is mock <laughs> the regime. Correct. Diminish their uh, luster in the eyes of the populace such that the populace no longer gives them any reverence. Yeah, I agree. One, would you mind if I indulge you with one more? No, not at all. From John Dickinson, one of the founding fathers, August 13th, 1787. Wow. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He says, experience must be our only guide. Reason may mislead us. Mm. Very reasonable people. However, (laughs) 
look what happened in the past. We need no, to judge a, our future from there. There's a lot of wisdom there, and uh, yeah. the one part this of conservatism. With haywire. The one part about conservatism that I like, which you're hardly ever seeing, conservative politicians, is a reverence for the thing that got us here. You know, the culture that got us here. Reason will make you tear down everything about your civilization and erect something brand new, uh, you know, Bolshevik style, Soviet style. Mm. And and the good part of conservatism, she has a little wisdom to go, no, let's maybe not do that. Maybe, maybe those fences were put up for a reason. Yeah, we can go on and on about that, but I think we'll, we'll leave it there for this episode of natural order podcast. Go to, BrianDeOleary.com for more of this. Uh, from my end, sign up for my email newsletter and Adam HeymanNature.com or HeymanNature.substack.com. You can catch all his stuff there. He's producing three episodes a week usually. <laughs> it's, it's not quite that much. <laughs> but yes, folks, please go to HeymanNature.substack.com. And my other show, Heyman Nature, is on YouTube. Just search Heyman Nature or go to my Substack and all the links are there. And you can catch me on Twitter slash X at Rerazer, R-E-R-A-Z-E-R. And Brian? Yeah, you got me right here. Oh, Brian, yeah. D- Brian D. O'Leary. You can find me right, if, you, if you're watching this on video. But uh, Brian D. O'Leary on the X Twitter, as I call it now. <laughs> X Twitter, uh, that's right. Still, still evolving. But uh, any last words, Adam, before we... We run? I know. Only to say that it was nice to get back in the saddle with you, partner, and this was fun, and uh, the debate was awesome. F versus D plus, very nice. Yeah, yeah, amazing. A D plus wins, but it does. <laughs> all right, folks, we'll uh, talk to you next time. Thanks, bye. Show notes for today's episode: go to naturalorderpodcast dot com slash ep twenty two. And to see what Adam's up to, go to HeymanNature.com. And to sign up for my email list and to find podcasts for The Brian D. O'Leary Show, that's BrianDeOleary.com. And of course, don't forget NaturalOrderPodcast.com.